rotating about a bond um, in order to obtain the most stable um, most stable confirmation because um, we all know sp3 hybridized atoms have what bond angle that's the most stable that you can have One hundred nine point five, right? So anything above or below one hundred nine point five is unstable in relation to it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to share something. Um, so if you're given these structures, can you guys see see what I'm, see what I'm doing? So here we have, hopefully you guys have gotten to know your um, prefixes and suffixes and things like that so that the cyclopropane, cyclobutane, cyclopentane, and our wonderful, what we all take organic chemistry for, one thing that we come out of it with um, is how to draw a hexagon. Uh, so here is the trend for stability. It's most stable. And down here is the least stable. It all comes down to the uh, ring strain. So here we have these sp3 hybridized carbons. And so we have that 109.5. Going down here, we have less and less. Here we have 90. Here we have 60. So anything above, anything below 109.5 and anything above all is unstable um, relate, re, in relation to, in, in comparison to this. Does everybody get that? All right, so moving forward with some conformational analysis, one of the primary examples I can almost, I haven't looked at it, but I can almost guarantee it's on your SI sheet is butane. Um, butane, for anybody who hasn't looked at it yet, it's a four carbon straight chain molecule. So I've got out my handy dandy model kit. Here is a butane. The black balls are the carbon, so it's a four carbon molecule, and all the white ones are the implied hydrogens if you were to draw it bond line. So in bond line form, what it looks, butane is simply just this. And so when we're looking, if I were to tell you to look down the 2, 3 bond, here we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We're looking down this bond. And so he's going to get off, you know, twinkle in his eye and say, oh, hey, I'm a little man. I'm looking, I'm over standing over here looking down this bond with my eye. Okay, so really, it's just looking at it like this. So here, it's you're pretty much just looking at it face uh, uh, head on at that at at that carbon. So again, we're looking down this bond through this carbon. So hopefully that that makes sense. And what we do, what we're what we're talking about with conformations is that these groups, these atoms can rotate. They can rotate about this bond. So what's gonna happen is that, for example, this front carbon, this front carbon can rotate 60 degrees, which we get this conformation. We can rotate another 60, which we get that. We can rotate another 60, in which we get that. Another 60, another 60. So we have all of these conformations, and some of them are more stable than others. That's why that's that, and that's where we get to the angle strain. And so, one uh one of the um one of the uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that you're not necessarily looking at the atoms itself. You're looking at the size that 
it, uh, that the uh, the amount of space that the groups take up. So this methyl group here takes up a lot more space than just this simple hydrogen. And so if our if we were to rotate right now, we're looking down the two bond. If I were to rotate, now I have these hydrogen uh, the, these methyl groups very close to each other and taking up space especially during this covid we don't want to be ne near each other we want our personal space and so again the most stable conformation is to be completely the the far farthest apart you can because as soon as you start rotating you can get into spaces to where you're taking up each other's space and therefore it's the um not stable and not favorable and so in order to draw it out what we have is something called Newman projections so this right here let me see if I can do a different color no, don't worry. anyways this is where my cursor is that's the front carbon so again from 2d to looking down the bond, looking down the bond, we have, this is the front carbon, and our back carbon is this big circle. The front carbon is right here, in front. The big carbon is this back one. The back carbon is this big circle here. So we have our methyl, we have our hydrogen, in the back carbon, we have our methyl hydrogen. So we should be able to somewhat visualize that we rotated. We we took this and we're looking down this bond. That almost looked like a nipple. Um, so. Again, we're looking at the 2D and we're going to kind of like a like a 3D looking down that bond. And when we talk about stability, it's because this bond can rotate about itself. So this methyl here could rotate 60 degrees. It could rotate another 60 degrees. Rotate another 60 degrees. And each of these is a different name. So there's something called anti. These are the names for the different conformations in terms of stability. So there's anti, or commonly called staggered. Staggered. Partially eclipse, gauche, which is really just a, a, a French word for just next to or something like that, and fully eclipsed. So these are in, I purposely wrote them like that because this is in ranking. This is most stable to least stable because like the sun and the moon, they fully eclipse each other. So like this here, if this methyl and this methyl were to eclipse each other, the structure, the Newman would now look like this. You guys somewhat see that? So this back carbon rotated. So this carbon, the back carbon here, rotated. Rotated. See, this is that methyl that I'm talking about that's rotating. It rotated about that 2-3 bond, just like this. And you see how it's coming closer and closer to that bottom carbon? Right now, it's taking up space and so we can keep on rotating to reach 
a more optimal conformation. And so to graph it, I have a picture somewhere here. Here's a graph. So in terms of energy, the uh, going back to general just basic physics and um, physics and gen chem uh, concepts, the most most stable um, conformation will have the least potential energy. So here we see anti. Anti, in other words, we call it staggered because, again, going back to this, we see that the biggest group back here on the back carbon is completely away from this front methyl. It's staggered. It's not in front of each other. It's not next to. It's completely staggered. You guys see that? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, so again, we're good. So just like these Newmans here, we have the, the fully, the totally fully eclipsed, unlike the partial eclipse. The, the difference between the partial eclipse and the fully eclipsed is that the fully eclipse has the two biggest groups eclipsing each other. Do you guys see that? Let me see if I can. So here, the two biggest group, wow, the two biggest groups the methyls are in front of each other eclipsing each other just like the moon and the sun every whatever years here gauche again is just the french word for meaning next to so it the the two biggest groups are just 160 degree angle away from each other partial eclipsed is that all the groups are eclipsing but the biggest groups aren't that's the only difference between the partial and the fully eclipse. The fully eclipse is the biggest groups are um, fully eclipse are eclipsing each other. Anti, the biggest groups are entirely and um, away from each other. So this front carbon has the methyl pointing down, and the back carbon is pointing up. They are the furthest they could get from each other. They're not messing with each other's space, and so it's. The anti and or in other words staggered and therefore because they're not taking up any space of each other's it's the has the lowest potential energy and therefore the most stable Does that makes sense to everybody right. so yeah, Brandon, um, let, me, let me get you. Is that here? So when I was on the Word document. So here, this is the ranking for stability. Can you see that, Brandon? So again, this anti-staggered is when the two biggest groups are the most away from each other. Partial eclipse is when the groups are eclipsing each other but not the biggest groups gauche or this next two um is when the two biggest groups are next to each other so they're kind of like this but the fully eclipse is when the two biggest groups are look are directly um in line yeah christy i'm purposely getting ahead of this because like i was saying before um, IUPAC, if you, if you know, the, if you know the rules, you're going to know how to name a molecule. And so IUPAC, so really it's pretty straightforward. And so that's why I'm touching on this extra stuff. So I can almost guarantee you there's going to be questions on the bonding assignment as well. Um, and so if I were to say, <clears throat> so another way that, um, someone can look at things is, you can have your cyclo, you can have your butane, but how do you go from butane to your Newman? So what I want to show you here is that here's your, here's your butane, one, two, three, four carbons, your 
two hydrogens. Of course, these are sp3, so I'm showing them dash and wedged. And so something that I liked, that I always kept in mind, if I were to go from bond line to Newman, is what's wedged is on the right, and what's dashed is on the left. Take note of that. What's wedged is on the right, and what's dashed is on the left. Because if you were to look at it, it should make sense. Because if you have your dashed, if you have your wedged, and you're looking at this carbon this way, right? If you look, if you look at it, what's on one side, what's into the plane is on is on one side, like dashed. What's dashed is over here. You see the picture. What's dashed is into the plane, so it's on that other side. What's wedged is coming towards me, out of the paper. And so again, we can draw this. Again, like that simple rule, what's wedged is right, what's dashed is left. So here we have our methyl pointing down. We have our wedged hydrogen. We have our dashed hydrogen. On the back, Draw a circle. We have our methyl pointing up. We have our hydrogen. We have our wedged hydrogen on the right. We have our dash hydrogen on the left. Does everybody see how I was able to go from bond line to Newman? Okay, good. And so that simple rule can apply. That doesn't only apply to hydrogens. That could apply to the methyl. So if the methyl was on a wedge or a dash, you can still use which wedge is on the right, which left is on the dash. So that's, the, that's as far as I want to take it with the conformational analysis. Um, the other thing that I want to somewhat touch on is chairs, cyclohexane chairs. So get used to it. You're going to see these chairs, these chair conformations. And I would just get used to drawing them, learn how to draw them. Basically, no matter what, Christy's asking questions, so no matter what, so yeah, that's just a just simple rule. I, I, it doesn't matter. That's just the rule I use. It's not necessarily a rule. It's a, just a rule of thumb. Um, if you were to get, have a bond line structure um, and you're going from bond line to the Newman projection um, uh, where you can see the rotation, just use that rule. What's, uh, what's wedged points to the right. You know, you're drawing it on the right side. And what's um, dashed is on the left side. But anyways, going back to these chairs, these are called chair conformations. So again, if I were to somewhat, some people struggled to see it, but it's kind of like a lawn chair. So you got me chilling after I'm done with this lecture. In this in the lawn chair and the only and if you were to do a chair flip this carbon is coming up this carbon is coming down and you see that this carbon comes up which is where you get this from this carbon points down is where you get that so to visualize it we have it here your cyclo Hexane. So here, hopefully I have it somewhat lined up. Here we have our chair, right? So if I were to do a chair flip, that doesn't mean I'm flipping the whole thing. That just means that I'm flipping where my head and where my feet are resting. So this, this carbon here flips downwards. 
this carbon here flips upwards and that's how you get the interchangeability between these two these two molecules something else I also want to point out is something called axial and equatorial does anybody know what that means Leah, yeah, axial. So axial and equatorial, a lot of it, it's just positions that substituents are lying on. So equatorial means horizontal, kind of, but I would, again, kind of like with axes and bases, if you remember one thing, you can get the other. Like you, if you remember axial, what axial is, then you can, then you can figure out what equatorial is. So if I have, here's my axial positions, I'm gonna draw my axial positions for this chair here. You guys ignore ignore those red spots. So as you can see, anything that's in a vertical position, if you if you have a for vertical substituent, doesn't matter what it is. The, and then these points here, these carbons, anything in a vertical position is that carbon's axial position. So similar to like a straight chain, I just look at where the, where the, where the apex is pointing. The apex of this is pointing down. And so that is its axial position. If it's if there's a substituent pointing down, this apex here is pointing up like a pyramid, and so the axial position for that one is straight up. Does that make sense? And so if you were to do a chair flip, what was axial becomes equatorial, and back and forth. That's what a chair flip does. So if if you were to have a a big substituent in the axial position. If you were to do a chair flip, it would become in the equatorial position. So, so from from this axial to equatorial. So let's look at this group here. This carbon is coming down because it's chair flipping, and so and it was in the axial position. And so, when you do a chair flip, what was axial becomes equatorial, and so it'd be kind of pointing at an angle. Anything at a di anything at a diagonal when looking at a chair, um, any substituent when you're looking at a chair is equatorial. Any any substituent that's vertical pointing up or pointing down is in an axial position. That's just one way I remember it. Another another thing that some people do um, is that they look at they can they kind of go back and forth up down up down. Um, so if you go were to go around the ring, this substituent here is pointing up, this one's pointing down, next one's pointing up, next one's pointing down, next one's pointing up, next one's pointing down. Does everybody see how I'm kind of figuring this out? Here, does that is this somewhat understandable? Is there something about it that you don't understand? Let me see. Here's a since we have a couple minutes, I have problems with me. Oh, an easy an easy thing that a lot of people get messed up on in bonding is again the drawing drawing cis and trans. So if I were to have a the if I were to make something if I were to make this cyclopropane one, two, three, this is two methyls. So it's dimethyl cyclopropane. So this if I were to say if I want this cis, remember cis and trans 
it's all about where the substituents are pointing in space. So if it's cis, are they on the same, are they pointing in the same direction or in the opposite direction? In the same, so what could I do? Wedge, dash, one wedge, one dashed. Yeah, you could make them both wedge because then they're both pointing upwards in space or out of the plane, or you can make them dashed. So that's for a cis. If it was trans, then it would be pointing in opposite directions. Another um, another thing is uh, along a double bond, if you were to have a double bond, I can almost guarantee you're going to see this in bonding. If you have a double bond in a molecule, look, look at a cross section this way. Look at the bond like this. And circle the biggest substituents. So the biggest thing is so right here. This is just an implied. Or these are just the implied hydrogens. So the biggest things here are this group and on this group. They're on opposite sides of the double bond and so therefore we would characterize this double bond as trans. Does that make sense? All right, yeah, you guys are much better than my previous section. Ugh. Wish them luck. All right, so that is pretty much it for you guys. Again, um, hopefully a lot of the conformational analysis, hopefully the visuals that I made made help helped you makes uh, make much more sense. And it was a good intro into what you're going to get into. It's later in chapter four, but it's definitely something that he's going to test on um, because it's a nuanced thing and he can ask a lot of things about it. So, um, and with IUPAC, again, just know the rules use your SI sheet, it breaks down the, it breaks down the prefixes, suffixes, and things like that. Oh, back so, to methylation. What's that? Did somebody ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. So with chair flipping, what's the question? Is it preferred for the turf butyl? So one good thing that you know what a turf butyl is. Um, when it comes to the biggest groups, again, the the if you want something to be in the most preferred position, you want the biggest groups in the equatorial. So if I were to do this chair here, this terp butyl here is in its axial position, but if I were to do a chair flip, it would then be in the equatorial position because again what was before flips in what you're in what um flips when you do a chair flip so this was axial it then becomes equatorial in terms of stability the biggest groups prefer to be in the equatorial position does that answer your question no problem all right, that is the major things that I have for you guys. So again, I'm gonna have this recorded and um, hopefully post this again. So again, going forward, uh, I'm gonna try to put the uh, access information in the discussion post. So I, what I mean by discussion post is the, is the weekly one that I send out um, about the problem assignment. Um, so again, just don't, don't bother with the, um, Cisco WebEx tool on the left hand side, just go to the discussion, use the use the access information that I send out. Um, so again, that is all I have for you guys and
Um, I'm going to stay on for a few more minutes and just let me know if you have any more questions.